you give 100% to every set, it doesn't matter, you don't leave anything in any set. All of it's progressive. Is it really worth it? You should go ask yourself that. It's kind of like a method to whatever you do. Alright guys, this so I'm filming for my YouTube channel today now to try and get up and run in. So I got the man behind the camera, Laz. And basically I'm going to run through like a leg session in a change of environment which I usually uh, don't usually go to. So I'm up in UFIT in Cardiff. So basically I'm going to run through what I usually do which will be two isolations on the hamstrings and quads. Then I'm going to go into a compound, same again, so I get about two or three compound exercises in. So we're going to start off now with a seated hamstring curl. So most people use it as kind of an accessory exercise, especially with uh, leg extension as well. This still needs overloading. Um, exercises like this, you've got to think the hamstring's job is to actually kind of flex the knee is, along with the quadriceps as well. So we're going to be using our knees for a lot of compound movements, so we need to keep them warm. And what a lot of people don't realise as well is that the hamstrings are made up of type 2 muscle fibres. So by using this, we're going to go nice and powerful from the start when they're nice and warm. And that can generate, you know, maximal hypertrophy in the hamstrings. another loading set now so it's been like my top set now probably a hit like between six and ten reps obviously 12 being the maximum I can go again after this I'm gonna drop back down maybe do something like a double drop set or a rest pause something like that um, but for now it's just about trying to progress it yep Yeah, so guys, at that point now, I think the pad's going to be a bit tighter on that one. Um, but I'm not going to go much higher. Uh, I don't want to be overdoing the volume on this too early. I want to make sure I have enough energy me for the compound and stuff like that. So you'll see later on. But give myself like two or three minutes now before I go back into like the intensity set. Uh, some people call it like a pump set or anything like that. They all got they different names. But you can see I'm short of breath already and it's two or three sets in. That's the intensity you need. Then guys, so basically I've done my two loading sets now. Um, I'm going to go into like a rest pause. So I'm going to take the load down the tiny bits and just max it out. Go for failure. Give myself like 10, 15 deep breaths and go again. It works out about 30 seconds rest. You'll see why. Yeah, cramping up already. So, you know, when I go into my combos later, it's gonna be a tough. But if you give 100% to every set, it doesn't matter, you don't leave anything in any set. All of it's progressive. Whereas isolations are your biggest compounds, progress every single time. You beat your numbers. So, 
So what I'm going to do now is go into um, like a leg extension. So I've done hamstring focus, I'm going to go into a quadricep focus. For anybody who has, you know, has very minimal knowledge on human anatomy, we've got hamstrings on the back of the thigh and quadriceps on the front of the thigh. What we want to focus on mainly is uh, actually controlling the concentrics or the way up because when you're doing any quad focus compounds it's actually a minute, you know, if you imagine doing a squat and coming up you don't really slow down the part where you stand up, you slow the eccentric on the way down and hold so you want to get the weight and try and progress it but you want to keep it under control, don't just swing it up and you know, try and drive your hips through make sure you are focusing on extending the knee you know, I'll show you right now so similar to um, why done with the well all exercises, but why done with the hamstring uh, curl right there is you know I'll try and acclimatise to the loads. I'm not used to any of the machines up here, and I'm going to start you know warming up. If it feels light, I'll drop out, and I'll get back into it then on a higher load. And then once I find my load for about 12 reps, I can start working with that. Yeah, so guys. What I'm going to do now is um, the kind of intensity set I'm going to do. So starting point is going to be you know, one or two notches a bit lower than I would have been on my second loading set. Um, right, and I want to go for failure as early as possible. Um, what I see a lot of is, you know, when people do supersets, they actually reduce the load really significantly. So, you know, what they can usually do for eight reps, they completely track it down so they can get like 20 reps. And all of a sudden, the quality of that exercise is completely diminished. Um, just so they can have energy to perform the next exercise. What you've got to think of is where is my training going to benefit most? So if you're training back and back is a priority and back thickness, you want to be putting a lot more effort into your rows rather than your pull downs. Um, if it's your calves, you know, you've got to be making the intensity and really pushing, you know, effort load and stuff like that on each set. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is um, I'm going to do like a triple drop set, go for failure, if it takes me 20 reps, it takes me 10 reps, that's failure, mechanical failure, not when I tell myself to stop, it's when I can't do physically any more, I drop the weight, go again, say fail as early as possible, then I go again, I may add like one or two isometric holds at the top on the last set, but we'll just see how we go. So, you know, that's our second exercise in. Um, usually people leave stuff like that, leg extensions to their last exercise as like a bit of an accessory work. You know, at the end of the day, that is pure isolation on the quadriceps. And when people want big legs, and they want to focus on your whole quad sweep, or any thickness on the front of the thigh, you've got to be isolating your quads. Same with hamstrings or anything like that. You may do all the compounds, but your isolation is just as important. Give 100% to every set. It's, you know, the moment I wait for, the moment, you know, it gets really competitive right now, and, you know, it's a hack squat. It's more of a quad isolated movement. Um, I, it's not an excuse, but when I had, you know, I completely crushed my sciatic nerve about two or three years ago, squat and then playing rugby. I completely moved away from squat for like six months. Leg strength and leg development is completely went out of the way. I moved gyms and they finally installed a hack squat and my legs blew up. 
because what people don't understand is that um, you can do squats for strength, and yes, definitely, you can grow doing squats, but it's, it's so tough because we don't you need to understand how your you know the legs are going to work. If you're you know if you're just doing a squat and bouncing from A to B completely out of the hole and driving your hips back, don't expect your legs to grow too much. You know, focus on knee flexion. Doesn't matter how wide your legs go, knee flexion, quads blow up. But this is the best for full knee flexion. I haven't used a side X one. I usually can go like five, five and a half for for reps on the one I use it down the kicks gym. But I, you know, a lot more people use the side X. So it'd be nice to see where I can pair in the grand scheme of things compared to them. Same approach. I'm just gonna see how the movement feels. Get my hips settled. Um, get through like sets in. Then I'm gonna start working. It may not be an intensity set on this one though because I'm gonna save up for the leg press after. I've had your phone off. Five. Each side for six. Uh, I'd probably drop back off and try to take him back in the 90, something like that. Now, so next time, I mean, like, I'm very certain to breathe and easy than this is intensity. Times I guess I would say I'm a spot on me or something like that, but with kind of extrinsic motivation, but just getting moves again. Just do what you've got to do. Try and relax. Uh, it's so, you know, I talk about in a bit new theory of arousal. You can only pump yourself up so much to the point where it detriments performance. I think if I got any more pumped up than I was then, game over. But, I mean, I'm starting to seize up from pushing against the pad so hard. And I think if I went on that set again, I think my form just completely goes sloppy. I think I completely blew myself, completely blew myself out in that last set. <sighs> so third exercise is ticked off now, and we're going to another compound, um, which usually is a loading exercise um, with a leg press. I usually alternate um, like a squat type movement, so whether it's barbell squats, V squats, back I know, um, leg press, hack squats, I usually alternate between them. But what I've been doing a lot more recently is kind of like um, a metabolic kind of approach where I'll go in a much higher rep range for a lower load. So, for example, now on this leg press, I'm going to go for a set of 20, which I done with um, Jamie Dorego when he used to coach me. It's a set of 20, and I go and um, we go five slow reps, really, really controlled, followed by five pump sets, uh, five pump reps, and we repeat that twice. So, I usually go on a normal leg press about three or four plates on this. But I'm completely battered right now after that hack set. So I'm just gonna see how we go. Oh. 
Definitely, bro. Quad cool, jump. Just a big breath flash. My cardio done for the day. You know, you know when you want, if you're ever manipulating carbs or anything like that, you want to, even if cheat meals or anything like that, fit them around your leg days. Test like that completely depletes your glycogen storage. All your carbs from poor session. We're going to be used to replenish your glycogen source. It's just a strategy to think about. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But, you know, I'm just giving you little tips. Uh, there's points in just, you know, I'm too tired to think. There won't be any RDLs today. Um, it's just, I usually I either put them in with a um, Whole session, or like you know, some kind of density day. Maybe that um, you know, JP calls it uh, a lot of. But ever since I completely crushed my sciatic nerve, I've been really cautious to any hip hinge movements. So if I do any kind of uh, squat movements or anything that like uh, puts a lot of strain on my lower back and glutes, I'll usually back off from a deadlift movement. Like um, I've done a lot where I've done like leg press and squat in the same session, and it completely ruined my back. So. And she's going to go for like a kind of isolation movement on the hamstrings, finish off like we did initially, but it'll be a lay-in variation. So the actual aim of this is to keep your hips driven into the pads. So there's no need to have your hips extended and actually using your hips to pull up. You want to keep them driven into the pad as, you know, as hard as possible. So all the weight is coming on the knee flexion. So shall we go without me cramping up, which could be funny. Yes, good. That's legs wrapped up for the day. Well, thank Laz for get, you know, giving the time to get me uh, filming. Check out all the stuff he does with Jamie. And if you're a member of the AJ Morris membership site, you'll check out some of the stuff. But you know, it was a good session. I'm hoping to get more in. Next time it'll be something like a push pull, maybe. Uh, but I just want to get the start of something special on the YouTube channel. I'm going to get loads of high quality videos filmed with Laz and whatever. But for now, that's me done. I'm home to rest, plenty of carbs. Uh, back in tomorrow, that back down kicks for push.